Uh, racks up more Voyager miles than anybody who flies overseas and back because although he's based in Gauteng, he does a lot of rock and surf fishing and so on. And with that, from Hybrid Angling, we welcome to Fish Talk on a Thursday night, Theo Portgeter. Good evening, Theo. Welcome to Fish Talk, bud. How's it, John? How's things going? Uh, very, very well. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Now, uh, since I've spoken to you, I mean, we spoke to you a couple of months back. We had a segment that we were putting into our Tuesday night show. What has been happening? It's, I, I see a lot of things happening on social media. You guys are posting a lot of photographs. You know, some guys are catching some huge sharks and, and all sorts of stuff. What's been happening with the rock and surf scene lately? Um, well, John, you know, the rock and surf scene has been going very good at the moment, um, especially North Coast and all that. Uh, the guys, the last week and the week before, we had an exceptional time. Uh -huh. um, a lot of, lot of big uh, inedibles coming out and that type of stuff. Um, also, the guys uh, down the coast, um, so the Eastern and Western Cape, um, they've also been catching a lot of big fish, a lot of big bronzies, a lot of big uh, black paleys coming out. Mm. But yeah, all, all said and good on that. Um, I mean, you know that every year, uh, SASA, the South African Shore Angling Association, they hold the National Rock and Surf. Yeah. So, you know, these men, ladies and juniors, they, they compete to represent the country, um, either being the Pratia teams, president's teams, or president and lands teams. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, it's it's a three to four day uh, fishing comp. Um, you obviously have to be registered with a province where I'm registered as in Pumalanga, and then obviously be registered with Sasa as well to fish this. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it's uh, this year they actually they at the moment as we speak right now they've got the B uh, B teams and the developments that okay. are fishing in Strace Bay, and they have the ladies uh, fishing in. Uh, uh, in border area, which is the Eastern Cape. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, with these guys, you know, a lot of prep and plan goes into it each year. And, you know, they start, I mean, I basically start every, after every nationals, uh, you know, I have a look at what I've done wrong and I change gear and I look at the terminal tackle and you know what it's like fishing, a very expensive sport. Mm, mm, so, yeah, you sure. know, you know, we've also, we've got a, a, a flux of about, probably about 4,000 people that try and get into the provincial teams to actually fish these things. Uh -huh. And it's, it's difficult to get sponsors and stuff like that. So a lot of the times you end up forking out the entire amount yourself. Yeah, that's which true. Which can be in the excess of, what, 10 to 15K just yeah. for one, one comp. Yeah, yeah. And that excludes your leagues and your tackle and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah, but like I said, there are a lot of big fish coming out, so we've been prepping uh, visually and physically for a while now, for about the past month, uh -huh. to see who's catching what in what area. Like I said, there's a lot of big paleys coming out, a lot of big bronzies as well. Um, very nice video from Zander that he had of Wesley catching a beautiful big bronzy down at uh, the area. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's, you know, like I said, we're busy prepping, we're going crazy at the moment. We've got guys testing different traces different tackles, things like that. And, yeah, Pumalanga is hoping to get a trophy this year. You know, okay. type of thing. Where, where, when are you guys fishing your next comp? Um, our league is coming up. So, like I said, the, the B teams and the developments and the ladies are busy this week uh -huh. with their uh, nationals. Mossel Bay, which is next week, will be the senior A teams. That's us. Uh -huh. And, yeah, that's that's going to be four days of hard fishing. Um yeah, so, what, so, 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 so what are the key species that you guys are going to be uh, targeting in Mossel Bay uh, over that tournament? Well, like I said, the, the guys that have been testing out in the whole shoot, so there is a couple of small lessers coming out. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely going to be a, a, a good couple of duck balls. You're going to get one or two of those big 165, 180-centimeter duck balls coming out as well. Mm -hmm. um, you might find somebody that's going to pick up a decent black paley of maybe 160 kilos as well, somewhere around there. Okay. But yeah, your odd, your odd bag, your odd reggae, and definitely a lot of bronzies and hammers. Yeah, yeah. You, you were mentioning uh, be, be, before we set up the interview that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, good-sized hammerheads that have been coming out in that area. Yeah, no, there's definitely a, a couple of good-sized hammerheads. But again, that's going to be uh, the test uh, as usual. So it's going to be the guys that can wait very deep, can get the distance with the casting, that type of thing. So, and uh, obviously it's always work rate, work rate, work rate. It's the right baits, the right floats, the right uh, length of trace, 
it's it's going to be quite a, a big fish tournament this year, I think. You know what, and this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand about rock and surf fishing is, you know what, uh, in a tournament like this, you know, you want to try and accumulate points as quickly as possible. So if you happen to catch one of those 160 kilo uh, rays, you know, uh, it effectively, you, you know, and I know from experience, it effectively puts you out of the competition for a minimum of two hours trying to haul that in which in two hours you could have caught maybe five or six bronzes and a hammer, which would have given you a higher scoring than actually catching a, 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 a big uh, ray like that. Uh, so here's where you know, your team management and your planning and your strategy uh, for what you're trying to achieve and your points goal that you're trying to achieve as a team is very, very important. Correct, correct. So like I said, there's a lot of prep that goes in. So you have to know who are the strong anglers, who can get the distance, who can wait, because um, obviously you want to get it as quick as possible. Oh. Uh, it, it basically happened now with the, the B Nationals where the guy that's sitting right on the top got a beautiful bonus, uh, a fish, a big raggy, and day two, all of a sudden, zero points blob. So, you know, it can go any which way. Oh. Um, you've basically got to run and chase the smashes, and, you know, like I said, it is a lot of prep, a lot of plan, and a lot of reading that water. Mm, mm. And, and and if you're not careful, some blisters on the hands and, and running up and down the beach trying to land something big. I mean, uh, we were talking the other day as well. I mean, wh what was the size of that fish that was landed now? And you said it was uh, down under where uh, somebody caught that one. Yes, yes. That was uh, that was that uh, tiger shark that was caught in Australia. That was, I think they said it was 480 kilos. It was a thousand pounds somewhere around there. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, I wonder so how that was. That was beach landed. Beach I wonder landed, how beach, many beach cost beach land. I wonder how many hours that took. Hey, oh, that's oh, come on. That must be at least about four or five hours of that. <laughs> at least, at least. Yeah, that's I know. The guy's arms. Yeah, he's not going to brush his teeth for the next couple of days. If somebody wants to get a hold of you to find out more about the, uh, you know, the, the rock and surf and how to get involved and so on, you know, because I know from, from experience, having moved up from the coast, you, you don't realize that inland there are still rock and surf clubs and so on. How would they go about getting a hold of one of the clubs or getting a hold of you to get more information? Okay, well, um, if they want to get a hold of me, um, obviously, uh, they can look at Hybrid Angling on Facebook. They can follow my YouTube as well. They can check me on Instagram. Uh -huh. They contact me through that way. Or give me a shout on 082 2113 Say it slowly. Uh, in, Say it slowly, man. People don't write so fast. <laughs> Say it slow. It'll be 082 2113 There we go. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, they can give me a shout, and then I can always put them through to whoever their closest club is, and, yeah, they go from there. All right, cool, man. Uh, we'll catch up with you after the tournament. Hopefully, you'll have some results for us. And, um, yeah, we'll be able to uh, let people know how it went. Uh, have you got one or two sponsors you want to give a quick shout-out to? Yes, please, John. Yeah, so definitely uh, um, one of the guys, Andre Mellet from Winch Braid. Guys, please have a look at that braid. It is one of the best on the market at the moment for the price. Uh -huh. um, Adam Kamdar from Township Harper. Willem Swat from Luanra Boats and Abdullah Mir from Mias Angling. And then also, you know what? You guys at Vibes.Love, please keep what you're doing. It is an awesome job. <laughs> we try to please. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> uh, Excellent. We'll, we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks so much for uh, chatting to us. And yeah, keep us uh, close at hand. And of course, we'll catch up with the scores in a week or so. Lovely. Thank you very much, Josh. You're, you're, you're online already.